What's the crack? Big dogs. Welcome. Bite to the channel. Welcome. Bite to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas, and I just fucking my. You ever been to the doctor and they like tap on your knee? That's basically what it's basically like Thor took his fucking hammer and went down on my knee like that when I went back on the fucking push. BDGE. Big dogs got to eat. That's what we are. That's who we are. That's the brand. That's the company. My name is Nicholas. Today, we're looking at my top 12 rookie wide receivers, my top 12 rankings, and their player comps, who they comp to most stylistically, athletically, build-wise at the NFL level, either former players or current players. We're going to look at playerprofiler.com player comps as well, kind of see where they got their player comps from, which will help us paint a better picture of who the athletes are, these rookies are overall. I'll get you a little bit more acquainted with these players as we come closer and closer to the rookie drafts, your dynasty rookie drafts, the NFL draft, all that exciting shit, okay? So first things first, if you are listening via podcast, you probably had your speakers blown out already by the welcome bike, so I'm sorry. If you have kids in the car, I might have. I have actually might have incidentally manslaughtered your child. Oh, we've hit an all-time low. I'm recording this on Sunday morning. Never a good time to record. But none the more, if you're listening via podcast, I would just absolutely fucking adore you if you went and gave it a five-star rating and review. Maybe commented on it. It's a fucking welcome bike. Something, Whatever you want to do. I don't care. Uh, that is greatly appreciated. We're trying to get our podcast game up a little bit. If you enjoy the video, make sure you hit the button that looks like this. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're going to help you Catch dubs in your rookie drafts, your dynasty drafts, and your fantasy football seasons overall. Top 12 wide receiver rookie rankings and their player comps today. Y'all know what we got to do next. That is Tucker Sheridan. Stop yelling. I'll stop yelling, I promise. And let's see. Boy. All right. Wide receiver one in the class. Traylon Burks did not move for me post combine. His combine was fine. His combine was fine. It wasn't 4 3 5 fine, but he's a wonderful prospect. Six foot two, 225 pounds out of Arkansas. The guy's a beast. He moves like A.J. Brown with the ball in his hands. He plays like A.J. Brown on the outside when the ball is in the air. Thus, my comp for him is A.J. Brown. Very similar size, speed, speed scores. Player profiler has his best comp as Jordy Nelson. I like that. I think everyone gets taken a bike when you start comparing white players to black players for whatever reason, but stylistically, he's a dominant player on the outside. Traylon Burks is much better with the ball in his hands, in my humble ass opinion. I think he's got more breakaway speed than Jordy Nelson has, and that's what's going to separate him as an elite fantasy prospect. Uh, again, the combine numbers did not deter me on Traylon Burks. He was my wide receiver one prior to it. He is my wide receiver one post to it. Uh, wide receiver one, Traylon Burks, big boy. Can do everything pretty well. Don't think too hard about this one. My wide receiver too. And you could easily argue a few different guys here. Um, I think we'll see a rotating cycle of Traylon Burks, my guy Drake London, and Garrett Wilson. I don't think you can go wrong with any of those three guys. Okay, so for uh, for Drake London, my con for Drake London, you know, the, the low-hanging fruit would obviously be Mike Evans. They look very similar. They look very stylistically similar similar on the field. They are tall. They are lean. Drake London came in a little bit bigger, 6'4", 219. So he's not as lanky. He's a little bit more of a muscular build. My comp for him was not Mike Evans, though I wouldn't be mad if you, if you had him as Mike Evans, was more Brandon Marshall. I think Drake London's a little bit better as a route runner than Mike Evans is. Uh, Mike Evans, really good separator in the intermediate parts of the field as well. I think Drake London is probably a little bit better at that, at least as um, where he was coming out of out of college, and I assume he's going to be a little bit more involved on the intermediate side of the field as opposed to just like downfield skying up for, for catches, and I think that kind of fits with player profilers comps. A little weird, to be honest with you. Marquez Colston. Marquez Colston, uh, much more of a possession receiver who was a guy that got open over the middle of the field, a lot of slant plays, a lot of those like 10 to 17 
yard uh, routes, which is kind of similar to, I guess, the way I saw Drake London playing. Great downfield threat, but I do think he's a better separator when we're talking about closer to the line of scrimmage than a guy like Mike Evans. So with Drake London, I mean, he's another guy that encapsulates everything, right? He is huge, 6'4", 219. He's only 20 years old right now. He is so, so young. Injury concerns are there, obviously, coming off the fractured leg. Um, hasn't really put together a full season, but he did break out as a freshman, and we didn't get to see him perform at the Combine because he is recovering from the ankle injury. He is putting on his own personal pro day within the next few weeks or whatever, so we'll have actual athletic measurables if those things are real. I mean, if he's putting on his own personal pro day, I'm assuming they're going to give you fake fucking numbers anyways. Drake London's a guy that, like, I am not going to look to into the athletics like you just watch him play and he's just a fucking beast he's a mammoth and wouldn't be surprised if he's the first wide receiver off the board in the actual nfl draft love drake london marcus colson is an interesting comp for him next up garrett wilson garrett wilson on player profiler comps to jerry judy uh makes sense six foot 183 he's a little bit smaller in size but we've seen you know that's not really a fucking problem at the combine four three eight forty yard dash my comparison to garrett wilson was like I, I threw, if I had to pick one name, I threw Calvin Ridley out there, but I think he's a he's a mixture of Calvin Ridley and Rashad Bateman, and the two things that those guys have in common is their separation skills, right? No matter where they are uh, on the field, whether it's running a slant, whether it's running a quick out, whether it's running a comeback route, or whether it's getting open deep, uh, Garrett Wilson has that Calvin Ridley down the field type game-breaking speed. I see a lot of similarities. I think Garrett Wilson might be a better... Um, He's, he's better with body control. He makes more like athletic plays. I think he might have a higher ceiling than both of those guys, Bateman and Calvin Ridley, which is saying a lot because Calvin Ridley is fucking beast and he's put together a really big fantasy season already in his career. Um, so Garrett Wilson, Jerry Judy. Uh, I don't want to say it's alarming because I think as a prospect, Jerry Judy was very, very, very highly touted. But you see Garrett Wilson coming away athletic. He's young, 21 years old, producing college. Um Good enough size at six foot. I don't really worry about the weight too much if you can have the height. Again, you need to be you need to be big in one way or another, right? Like everyone's like Devontae Smith. No one liked him because of size. It's like, dude, he's like six one. Like no one gives a fuck. If you're six one, you're gonna be fine. If you're five seven, one seventy, we have a problem. If you're six one, one seventy, I don't really give a fuck. If you're five five ten and you're one eighty nine, if you're five ten or you're one ninety nine or whatever, also don't give a fuck. You gotta be. There's gotta be some BMI factored into it, okay? Where you're either a little bit wider or you're a little bit taller. You got the Debo Samuels or you've got the Devontae Smiths. If you fit into like any of that kind of molding, I'm fine with it. All right. So Garrett Wilson, I think he's a uh, a more like explosive player than Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy, I feel like is kind of defined by like his route running. I know he's, you know, he can make plays downfield, but I feel like the talk of Jerry Judy coming out as a prospect was just like pure separation skills. And we haven't really seen it on display because of the quarterback situation, but Garrett Wilson, I have him as like a Gar uh, Calvin Ridley, Rashad Bateman type comp player profiler out here with the Jerry Judy comps, Chris Olave. We're throwing around Stefan Diggs comps for Mr. Chris Olave, six foot 187, Runs the 4 3 9 40 yard dash. This is in line with like how the running backs just went absolutely fucking nutty at the combine and were giving out fake 40 times. My comp for Chris Olave is Tyler Lockett. I think that's probably more realistic than Stefan Diggs, though. Chris Olave is um man, I'm 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 really intrigued to see what his ceiling is at the NFL level. Cause it there was a lot of hate. People liked him for his like route running in college. And then all the analytics people were like, we don't like Chris Olave, and it went too far, and everyone's back in on Chris Olave. Uh, but they're like, oh, he doesn't have a high ceiling. And I'm kind of in that camp where Lockett can have a high ceiling, but I think like you shouldn't this is this has been my take on Lave. I think he's an awesome player. I think he's really crispy in his routes, really good separation skills, and can make really exciting plays downfield. I don't think any NFL franchise wants to run their passing offense through Chris Olave. Very much like Tyler Lockett. You don't want to have your entire offense passing wise run through Tyler Lockett. But it can. It can function that way. Like, we've seen that as Tyler Lockett as the one for Russell Wilson. Can be fine. But realistically, you want a DK Metcalf there. You want a number one there. Doesn't mean a top 15 or top 12 fantasy season is out of the range of outcomes. So, Chris Olave, I see a lot of Tyler Lockett. I see um, the deep balls to Chris Olave are on point, And it looks like Russ to Tyler Lockett when he's getting thrown those balls. Next up, Jameson Williams. Man, this was a really – this is a tough comp because, like, everyone's just going to throw out Tyree Kill because of the game-breaking speed. A lot of these guys in this class, right after the wide receiver combine happened, me and Ray GQ got on a live stream on my channel 
about a month ago, one of our most popular videos, actually. If you guys missed that, we'll have Tony link it down below. And we just talked about the combine performances of everybody. And I brought up the point that because this year's class ran so fucking well at the combine, everyone just came out way more athletic than we imagined that they would, right? Whether it was the running backs or the wide receivers, guys running sub four fours like we haven't seen before. And I said, you know, because Jamison Williams did not run, do you think that it actually fucking gave him an L for this year because a lot of teams were probably looking at Jameson Williams as the prize jewel of this class in terms of speed. If we're like, okay, we want game breaking speed. We have to take Jameson Williams. And then you had Christian Watson run a four, three, six and Olave run a four, three, nine. And the numbers start, you start to become numb to these numbers because everybody did, but those are so fucking fast. Like Tyree kill ran a four, three, five. I think, I think he was a four, three, five and Christian Watson ran a four, three, six. Is Christian Watson as fast as Tyree Kill? No. Like, nobody's as fast as Tyree Kill. But this year, the 40, the 40 numbers were, were fucking weird. So some teams might look at James Williams and say, okay, we don't need to use a top 12 pick anymore because if we're going for game-breaking speed, and that's why we would have used a top 12 pick on James Williams, we can get that at the back of the first round because there are a lot of wide receivers that ran the sub-4-4 four, four speed. It ain't fucking real, though. There, there still is something in me that says, like, James Williams... He's the one where you, when you actually turn on the film and you watch this dude run, his speed is so fuckingly apparent to be in another tier than every other. He's the, he's the guy when people talk about speed, it's real from him, right? Like game speed on the field, the combine, whatever he's, he's returning from an injury. Now he tore his ACL at the very, very end of the college season, which is why he didn't run and which is why we don't have any updated, uh, workouts from him. I'm not sure if we will, but he's he's the real fucking speedster jewel of the class. So when I said it, it made sense from like a number analytical standpoint, but I do think teams will still put on the film and say like, he's the guy we need if we want game breaking speed. That being said, I mean, they don't have the athletics for him. They went with the best comp, Deami Brown. Breakout age is not really there. College dominant, like you look at across the board analytically, college dominator, college target share, breakout age, very fucking medium. And he started his career at Ohio State, which he couldn't really get on the field at all, which is kind of what killed him and made his breakout age late. Then he gets to Alabama and goes nuts this year, right? 79 catches, 1,572 fucking yards, 15 receiving touchdowns. And you see, like, who Jameson Williams is as a player. He's not just a game-breaking speed guy. He's also pretty crispy inside of his routes, okay? So he's 6'2", 180. He's got, he's long, right? He's got, he's got real length to him. So... I, I hesitate to ever comp someone to Tyree Kill, so I would rather say Jamison Williams is Deshaun Jackson than Tyree Kill, so that will be my comp. The comp from player profiler Deami Brown, I think, speaks more to the fact that his analytical numbers and his production came at a later age. I think that was the problem for him, and if we got the athletics, if we got the 40 time, the speed score, and the vertical jump, and the burst, and all that kind of shit, I think we would see a much uh, more similar comp to... A, even it might even come out to like a Tyler Lockett, but like a Tyler Lockett, Deshaun Jackson, one of those guys. I think Jameson Williams would be a, a, an awesome piece at the next level. He's not just Henry Ruggs reincarnated. He's a much better route runner. He's a much better player than Henry Ruggs ever was. Uh, so Jameson Williams is a really interesting, intriguing prospect who is my number five because he's a game breaker. Um, I don't know if an offense is necessarily going to run around him, but he is you know, a very high end second wide receiver probably. My number six, Georgie. Pickens, 6'3", 195. So he is tall. He is lean. He just turned 21 years old. He ran a 4'4'7 four, four, at the combine, which was good to see because it puts him in the 71st percentile when it comes to weight-adjusted speed score. Now, the, the Pickens love has gone nutty the last couple weeks, couple months or whatever. Most people are saying had he not gotten hurt, he would have been arguably the wide receiver one or two of this class. I'm not there with him. Uh, you could see the comp on here, another Jerry Judy comp, which was kind of uh kind of interesting here I, I you know I don't I don't see any similarities in terms of their game style obviously this is just a formula that they have they put something in and it fucking shoots out a bunch of numbers in terms of size speed athleticism college production age it, it factors into everything and then gives it the best comparable player and on their website they have the top five best comparable players but you need to have access to their paid package so that I cannot just fucking shill out to you guys without without getting permission from them and uh, I'm just going to let y'all pay for their package if you want it. So for George Pickens, I actually think a really good comp for George Pickens, and y'all are not going to like this, but I don't look at George Pickens. A lot of people are going to look at, say, George Pickens and watch his film, and because he's in the Georgia uniform, they're going to go to A.J. Green. A.J. Green, you know, when all said and done, I know the shit trailed off at the end of his career, 
but legitimately one of the best wide receivers of all time, right? I mean, when you look at, there's been thousands and thousands of NFL wide receivers over the history of the, of the league. I don't know if he's like top 20 or top 30, but he's like top 50, top 70. And if you're in that range in terms of best wide receivers of all time, like you're there, you're in that conversation. I don't see that with George Pickens. Some people do. I think it's a little bit of an unrealistic comp to put him into the, to the AJ Green range. He does a lot of things well. I think he's going to be, don't hear what I'm not saying here. I think he's going to be a role player at the next level, but a very valuable, important role player in the same way that Mike Williams or Chase Claypool or even like Devontae Parker are a role player or a role player plus. My comp for George Pickens is neither of those three guys. It's actually Marvin Jones. Long, lean, can definitely operate as the alpha. He's just he's crispier than probably given credit for, but no one, you know, he's probably not your wide receiver one. But again, he can be. He can be if needed to be. We've seen it before, and we've seen him put up really big numbers before. I, I think there's a very fine line between comping him to Marvin Jones and then car, uh, comping him to fucking A.J. Green, right? Like, not everybody's going to have Hall of Fame upside in this class. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I look like a fucking moron in seven years when Traylon Burks is a bust and George Pickens is the goat of this class. But I see more Marvin Jones who can do a lot of shit. He's versatile. He can win on the outside. He can win over the middle. He can definitely win downfield. He's athletic. He's long. He's lean. But A.J. Green is like legit borderline Hall of Famer. So they have Jerry Judy. A lot of people have A.J. Green. I have Marvin Jones. Court is adjourned. Christian Watson is my wide receiver seven in this class. He was like the overall winner. If you could choose one player out of the 500 people that competed at the combine, Christian Watson won the combine. He took the fucking dub home to, you know, unfortunately he lives in North Dakota State. Or he lives in North Dakota. Went to North Dakota State. A little bit of an older prospect, almost 23 years old, but 6'4", 208. This guy runs a 4'3", 6". You can look at the fucking bumps across the screen on player profile. 4'3", 6". 98th percentile for weight adjusted speed score, 95th percentile for burst score, 97th percentile for catch radius. Burst score is a combination of it's a like a formula that they use at player profiler that uh, counts your vertical jump, your broad jump. So your overall like explosiveness, that's how they get the burst score His agility. I mean, it was terrible compared to the 98th percentile of everything else, but 60th percentile still still an above average player there. The best comp on here is Denzel Mims for him, which you don't love to see. And a lot of that is going to have to do with the fact that he's a little bit older. He stayed four years at college. His breakout age was after the age of 20, which is in the 53rd percentile. It's not a strong analytical profile. The raw numbers are not there. As you can see, his college stats a little bit below the bumps there. He never had a season above 801 receiving yards. Uh, I don't know if they have like a real college target share number, which is why maybe that is left blank because it, with when you're doing research for a lot of these prospects, when they go to smaller schools, especially a fucking school like North Dakota State, uh, you you can't go on to a lot of typical websites. Like you can pull a lot of stats for college uh, college players from like profootballreference.com, completely free to use and grab them. As his player profiler, if any of you guys want to go check it out, guys like Christian Watson and their stats will not be on those profiles because for whatever reason they just like don't have they don't have a guy at the fucking games doing the counting stats. And you could like find some makeshift bullshit websites like the North Dakota State like actual school website and try to find his stats, but sometimes they're like wonky and fake and fucking fraudulent. So sometimes it can be tough to gather statistics from these smaller school players, which is why it's always super fucking important for them to go to the combine and then to go to the senior bowl. And you, and you hear the hype of Christian Watson dominated the senior bowl was easily the number one player there. Cause he gets to play against real sec and big 10, whatever competition that are going to be players at the NFL level. And then he runs and he tests out to be as athletic as any NFL player. That's basically ever come across the fucking combine at the wide receiver position so you know you're seeing him on film you're like oh this guy looks awesome and then you get to see him play against real competition you get to see him athletically what he what he comes out relative to what we've seen at the wide receiver position with nfl players so he puts himself in that range and when you look at the raw numbers i dropped the stat um i don't remember what video it was in but i was i was doing some research on the north dakota state offense right and you're saying like why is why is he never eclipsed 43 catches or 801 receiving yards and i looked back and it was something fucking nuts where they ran the ball at a clip of like 
68% of their plays. It was something ridiculous that would never, ever happen on any other team or any NFL play. Like the, the highest run rate in the NFL is like 51% by like the Baltimore Ravens, which obviously includes quarterback runs and shit. Their team was at like 65% of their overall offensive plays were runs. And I think they attempted like 275 passes or something last year, and he had 43 receptions. So in terms of like overall raw production, not there, but in terms of like what he did relative to the rest of his team, he dominated. Okay. So you could see obviously college dominator 44%, which is in the 90th percentile. I could have just said that and didn't have to go into all the context, but that's what we like to do here. So if you appreciate the deep work that we do, again, just make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you're new, make sure if you're listening via podcast that you hit that rating and review five stars, five fucking stars. Uh, and that's much appreciated before we move on to Mr. Jahan Dotson. Now, the Tyler Lockett comp on Player Profiler makes a lot of sense. I have him comped to T.Y. Hilton. He's my wide receiver. Eight, a little bit undersized, 5'11", 178, but that's fine, right? He's not 5'9", 178. He's not 5'11", 162 or anything like that. So that's fine with me. I think that's a very similar size to T.Y. Hilton, a very similar speed to T.Y. Hilton. He's a guy who's awesome on the outside, great separator, great, great route runner, uh, explosive down the field. So yeah, my comp was T.Y. Hilton. Uh, I think Tyler Lockett makes a lot of sense too. I absolutely love Jahan Dotson, I think he's one of those players that you're going to get at the you know middle, like 203 to 206 range in your rookie drafts, and it's going to be an absolute fucking dub. You're just sitting there waiting for the value to pour into your soul, and you're getting it from Jahan Dotson out of Penn State. Let's move on to our wide receiver nine, but before we do so, I want to tell you a little something, something about Felix Gray. Felix Gray, these glasses, FelixGray.com, get FelixGray.com forward slash BDG, I believe. I don't know. The link will be down in the description. First link down there. Felix Gray, this is the best purchase I've made under $100. No fucking questions asked. These are blue light blocking glasses, okay? If you have prescription, you can do both prescription and blue light blocking. These basically block any of the light that comes off of the screens that you use on the daily basis, whether it's a monitor, whether it's a laptop, whether it's your cell phone. If you're one of those people that's in bed at night fucking scrolling through TikTok, we're on TikTok, by the way, at BDGE double underscores. That's our brand uh, handle across all fucking social media platforms. If you're scrolling TikTok at night, you're scrolling IG reels, whatever it is, and you're staring at it, that li the light that comes off the screen, uh, the screen basically tells your brain like you're awake, you're staying awake. So it tells your body do not produce melatonin because your boy is wide awake and wants, wants to watch more TikTok. If you have these glasses on, it blocks the light. So your brain does not get the light into its wiring, okay? And then it tells your body to start producing melatonin so that when you put your phone down, you're immediately ready to go to sleep. It blocks all the bad shitty light that was man-made and man-created, all right? These things will help you fall asleep faster. These things will make sure that your eyes are not bleeding by the end of the day. I like to put them on as soon as the sun goes down. It is the morning right now or the early afternoon. I put them on, obviously, because I want you guys to see what they look like. They're stylish. Some people say I look smart in them, which is a huge plus. And, you know, it's obviously fucking fake news. But I love Felix Gray for aesthetics. I love Felix Gray for the actual product that they give you, right? It's, it's, it's a very, very, very good product that actually helps your life. It enhances your life. It's beautiful. They block blue light. FelixGray.com. The link, I, I would prefer you to go through my link that would let them know that you sent me, that I sent you guys. Obviously, it'll be the first link in the description. I think they're giving us a promo code. I'm not actually sure. If you try BDGE, it might work for 10 or 15% off. So check that out. Let me know if the promo code works or doesn't work. If it doesn't, Drop a comment and I will reply to you and let you know when the discount will be available for y'all. Wide receiver nine. Sky Moore, 5'10", 195, explosive, 4'4", 1 speed. He is a slot guy. He is a guy that can operate on the outside for sure. He's a, uh, he, he, he rose up draft boards quickly after the combine. There's not a lot of tape on him. I had trouble finding film on him outside of a couple of games, but I loved what I saw. Uh, they have him compared to Golden Tate, which I like. I think Golden Tate is kind of in a class of his own with the ball in his hands. I think Sky Moore is good, 
yak wise i think golden tate is like elite some of one of the best of all time so i don't know if i'd necessarily say they're stylistically the same but i understand they're a little bit beefed up for it for a slot wide receiver someone who specialized in the slot 5 10 195 is a pretty solid bmi score i have uh i have sky Moore comp to I, elijah Moore. i like elijah Moore and christian kirk i think that's the combination that i see between sky Moore. He is uh, really quick in and out of his cuts, can get open on basically any route that he wants to, but will play predominantly in the slot and be a really, really good slot receiver for a team at the next level. So Sky Moore, I think we got a little bit more to more action there. Let's move to wide receiver 10, David Bell, Anquan Bolden comp, huh? This is, uh, I think this is actually the first time I am seeing this. That is crazy. I got to see what the other five comps they have for David Bell are. Actually, you know, I'll do that for y'all right now. Don't tell uh, player profile I'm doing this. Sorry, Matt. Man, because I was not a fan of David. I, uh, listen, I, I don't say I was not a fan of David Bell. I was not a fan of David Bell relative to how Dynasty Twitter would make you believe he was Randy fucking Moss. David Bell. Okay, this makes more sense. So his best comparable player is Anquan Bolden. His second best comparable player is Laquan Treadwell. His third best comparable player is Farrell Cooper. His fourth best comparable player is Jared Boinkin. That makes a little bit more sense to me. Uh, again, I was down on David Bell relative to how Dynasty Twitter would try to make you believe he's the greatest player of all time. All of the metrics across the board look really good. Breakout age, college target share, college dominator. This is something I've been saying for a while now. The yards per reception number being low makes me think that when you go to a school like Purdue, you're easily and far and away the best player and athlete on your team. Therefore, they force feed you... Uh, targets and they force feed you production which accounts for all the other things and if that yards per reception number is low that means you're not doing much with it with the with the overall volume that they're giving to you so he comes in at 6 1 2 12 he's big he is he's built so i can understand why the comp to anquan bolden made sense athletically though he was one of the biggest losers at the combine if you look across the little fucking ant hills on the right side of the screen four six five forty speed score in the 38th percentile burst score agility, it's all bad it's all fucking bad news my comp has been Sterling Shepard for David Bell. It's been that. It was that three months ago. It was that two months ago. It was that a month ago. It was that pre-combine, post-combine. It will continue to be that way post-NFL draft. People get so fucking mad when you don't compare David Bell to Keenan Allen or if you don't compare David Bell to Anquan Bolden. Like I don't know why they take it so personally, but there's a really good chance David Bell goes in like the fifth, sixth round of the NFL draft too. I don't, I don't think people like realize that. And then people hyping him up are going to feel pretty fucking stupid about it. Sterling Shepard's a great player. He's a great role player at the NFL level. He's a separator. He's a yak guy. He's been consistent uh, wide receiver two, wide receiver three for the Giants for a long time. And I think that's what David Bell's going to be at the next level. Yes, he has some spectacular catches. I get it. But players are not the sum of their spectacular catches. They are the sum of everything they did at the college level, their athleticism, and their draft capital. And that's how I see David Bell playing out. So Anquan Bolden, interesting comp there. Next guy up for me, we were spot on here. Uh, they have best comp for Jalen Tolbert, my wide receiver 11, Adam Thielen. My comp for Jalen Tolbert was Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen's a little bit bigger. Jalen Tolbert looks bigger. When you watch him play, you, you assume he's like 210, 215. He's, he's like pretty fucking yoked. He plays on the outside a lot. Uh, and he's a very strong possession receiver. He's very much Adam Thielen in that like, there are not a lot of flaws in his game. He is 23 years old, so he's a little bit older, but he's got the size. He's got the speed. He's at least average athleticism across the board. Uh, the more I watch Jalen Tolbert play, the more I like this kid, and the more I want to move him up the fucking rankings. I'm having trouble deciding. I don't think I want to. I could Depending on how the draft goes, I could see him jumping up to wide receiver nine ahead of Sky Moore and David Bell. There's a really good chance Sky Moore goes like, I mean, yeah, fuck, I could see him. I can see Sky Moore being, you know, in the pick 28 to 32 range where the Chiefs and Packers have picks. But I can see Sky Moore going anywhere from like very back end of the first to like early second. I don't think Jalen Tolbert's going to get there. So it's going to be hard for him to jump over there. I can see David Bell falling down the NFL draft and having Tolbert uh, jump him. Tolbert's a guy that like very, very few flaws in his game. And I remember I put on like, I, I opened up three or four full game films and I wanted to watch Jalen Tolbert from start to finish. The first thing I saw was Jalen Tolbert drop. It was a five-yard slant. He was wide open, and he just completely drops it. I'm like, yo, you got to be fucking kidding me. Like, in my mind, that, you know, it's hard to overcome first impressions like that. But he fucking did. Everything from there on out was flawless. I mean, he's making contested catches on the outside that you would think he was 6'3", 215. He is uh, moving with the ball in his hands. He is separating. He 
He is just very, very good at everything at being a wide receiver across the board. And that's why the Adam Thielen comp makes perfect fucking sense. All right. Let's move to my wide receiver 12. The last one on this list, 6'4", 205, Clemson product, Justin Ross. Now, the first thing to know about this kid is he broke out as a freshman, went absolutely fucking nutty in 2018 at the age of 19. Or Actually, his breakout age was 18.7, according to this, in the 94th percentile. 1,000 receiving yards as a true freshman, obviously attached to Trevor Lawrence. It was all kind of downhill from there in terms of production, efficiency, and a ton of injuries that he has dealt with and the injuries are real they are intense and they are a worry at the next level he came in and i mean you see that yards per reception number of 11.1 that is obviously a concern for me uh the breakout age is so early but the injury concerns are so real uh and then his athleticism man i wanted to comp him to someone that was like a lot more athletic someone that can maybe play downfield someone he just you know he didn't have it he worked out at the pro day Ran a 4.64, which, you know, they adjust to a 4.69. Speed score overall, his burst score, just really unathletic for Justin Ross and just not a good uh, not a good topping to the Ross cupcake here, man. So they have him comp to Terrace Marshall, which is obviously not a good thing uh, after we saw what he did his rookie year. I have him as a mix of like Ruben Rendell. <coughs> Let's try that again. I have him as a mix of like Ruben Randall and Tim Patrick, a guy that's like long, He's lean. He can make plays on the outside, but given everything that we have at this, like literally it couldn't have started off better for what he did his freshman year. And then not, it, it couldn't have gone worse after the, as soon as he got out, he's like, school's out. Fucking we're good for the summer. I'm coming home. Mama better have those fucking home cooked meals ready for me for the next three months before I go bike to campus. Everything went downhill from there, man. Everything. His mom must've been cooking up spam for him. Like, nothing went right after his freshman year at Clemson, man. Uh, so, you have to, you really have to put together a complete picture when you're looking at the profiles of these players. And for Justin Ross, for me, he was a guy I was kind of excited about when I first started doing the research on the rookies, just given how early he broke out. But, like, when I start looking at everything combined, he's a sum of his parts player that I don't think the sum is is really that tantalizing for me so Justin Ross will be my wide receiver 12 but I do think we start to see a really big drop off in the tiers after uh after the Justin Rosses you know of course there's going to be guys yelling about like Calvin Austin and Wondell Robinson and those guys are fine I I think there's a lot of upside and a lot of downside with all the prospects left once you hit like the Jalen Tolbert range uh so you know stack up those end of second mid third round and and earlier draft picks if you can, because there is a little bit of a tier drop off in my opinion, after these guys, that is today's featured film. Okay. I love y'all. Make sure you subscribe. So you can tune into Noah's film tomorrow. We got our office vlogs up and running every Thursday. I'll be bike Friday and Saturday before Noah hits the big screen again on Sunday, every single day, seven motherfucking days a week, baby. Ain't no one working like we are out here. Nobody. All right. I love y'all. And I shall talk to y'all later.